We are live. All right, welcome to another awesome show and tell. We're going to have all sorts of people showing off their cool stuff. It's really easy. Uh, when we call on you, unmute your mic, show your stuff. While you're waiting, please mute your mic so we don't have feedback problems. Um, first up, we'll call on Jay. Jay, you're the first cube. Please unmute your mic. Enjoy. Hey there. Why don't you do charades? I'm down with that. You know, we already did that last week. We're going to stick <laughs> to the voice. We're going to do the voice thing. All right. Um, mine's uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, but what I did was I mounted my Raspberry Pi to my external hard drive. All right. So um, what I went and did was um, uh, pretty much replaced a Windows box that was using lots and lots of electricity here in California with a Raspberry Pi mm. that uses two. So um, what what I did do, what makes it a little bit special, was I posted a build starting from scratch, how okay. to do all of the steps. Um, so you're running like a file server on the Pi. Yeah, so I took Occidentalis and, and added Samba, added uh, mini DLNA, and um, XFAT support. Uh, which is a uh, new file system that you can add in um, that lets you plug in the hard drive to like a Windows machine, copy over all your music mm -hmm. and all of that, and then you can plug it into the Raspberry Pi and share it out over the network. Yeah, you can also install stuff like AirPlay and similar, and you can have like your own, own little private media hosting thing, whatever yep. it's called. I don't know what they're called. There's probably a name for them. <laughs> okay. That's really cool. So you're, you basically had, uh, for your home, you had a computer, and it was like a big tower with, like, fans. Yeah. And, like, spinning things, and you're like, I hate that. And so you replaced it with this Pi. Are you going to put it in another box, or are you just going to kind of let it? I think, the, I think the next step is I might take another hard drive enclosure mm. and put a laptop hard drive in it. And yeah. put the Raspberry Pi in with it as well, and okay. so just try to make it smaller. But but this just kind of sits on my desk and kind of stays out of the way. So okay, uh, that's it. That's totally cool. All right. Well, the the good news is that like Raspberry Pi is pretty stable. We've had people who run yeah um, their Pis for like months. With you know, it's like despite being an embed Linux platform, usually they're not known for stability. Yeah, but it is quite for Occidentalists. We know that someone's been running it for five or six months um, controlling a fish pond. Oh, wow. Which yeah. is which is a little bit of pressure on us because you know, if anything happens <laughs> to these fish... These fish, fish are like, looking at you, yeah. like just staring at you with their big blobby eyes. Yeah. No. Well, I, I started off, uh, when I first started playing around with the Pi, I started playing around with, uh, with Raspbian and Wheezy. And then um, when I started realizing, like, all the stuff that you can do with the I.O. and all of that and how that's where Occidentalist works a lot better. So I plan to do more with the same Raspberry Pi, um, but what I'm trying to do is is in order to, you know, do all the little things I did, I kind of pulled stuff in from a lot of different sources and yeah. trying to awesome. you know, funnel yeah. it in into one how-to. We have oh, a good. we have an Occidentalist update coming out soon. I too, know so. it's almost done. Actually, you know, it's interesting. Raspbian has they they have over the last few months slowly added every nearly everything that um, I put into Occidentalist. When Occidentalist came out, they didn't have like Wi-Fi support, GPIO support, yeah. I2C support, SPI support. Now they I think they were like, oh, people want this, so now it's in uh, like the latest release has nearly everything. But we're gonna be adding some more. Yeah. Cool kernel mods, so uh, yeah, V3 will have some more stuff in it, which will be great. Cool. All right, All right. thank you for sharing your project. Yep, and thanks. don't forget to post a link uh, for people uh, in, in the Google Plus post so that people can check out your project if they want to yeah. build yourself, themselves. Okay. And if you email support at adafruit.com, you will get a asking on the show and tell sticker for that spiffy enclosure. Which you enclosure. can put on your enclosure. <laughs> I, I will do that. Thank you very okay. much. All right. Thanks, Jay. All right, next up, Brian. Welcome Hello. back. Um, mute your mic and show us your project. Good evening. Hello. Greetings. How are you doing? Good. Good. All right. I don't have a project. I am going to show off uh, the Fubar Labs hackerspace. That's, what That's a project. That counts. All righty then. Um, okay. I'm going to get everybody dizzy by picking up my laptop and spinning it around and stuff. So if you're okay with that, we'll do yeah. it. Yeah. Totally. That's fine. Yeah, give us a tour. Where is this hackerspace at? Uh, I'm glad you asked. 
It's in New Jersey. Oh, that's not too far from here at all. Right. As a matter of fact, I'd also like to thank you guys for your support for Hack RU. I was there just before I came here, and the kids are going crazy with uh, everything that you sent, and uh, they are right. going to have a lot of hardware. So. Awesome. Okay. Couldn't, couldn't be there because they're basically tying up all the wireless. I came here to Fubar Labs where the wireless is a little less crowded right now. So let okay. me uh, let me lift off and we'll uh, take a look around the place. Okay. Um, I'm going to get out of frame in a second here. This is our main classroom. And I'm going to slowly pan around for everybody. Hopefully this isn't too fast and nobody's getting dizzy yet. Yeah, it's so great. You got a little workshop. You've got a whiteboard. Well, actually, this is this is our main room, and I'm going to show you something else. We recently had a business that was going out of business, donated a bunch of hardware to us, which I'm now going to start to sweep at. But first, let me show you a. This is a work in progress. This is going to be a 3D printer that should be able to print a two by two by two cube. That's feet, not inches. Oh. Yeah. Over here, you may recognize. Uh, this product made by a famous company, <laughs> the, our cupcake. Yes, yeah, so it'll make uh, a Also, Can this. Point it down a little bit because it's a little. We're seeing yeah. the wall, not the things. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there you go. All right. There's the MakerBot over here. Yeah. We have basically the hardware for a Generation Four MakerBot, and this is currently loaded with the uh, Thingamatic in it. But we have a lot of work to do on it. It's a big yeah. work in progress there. Have That's a, lot a nice else. gantry, though. It looks like it's. It'll be really solid. Oh, it's, it's, you could stand on it. Yeah. Uh, this is part of the donation we recently received from an organization. They did a lot of work with lasers and uh, telemetry systems for tanks. So we got a lot of uh, optics and very sensitive photoelectronics. And this was one of their products. If you can see it, it's a wow. fast framing CCD camera. But as you can see, it's a little... Little dated technology, but uh, those are some rock solid cases that we can do for something else. Yeah. This is actually our computer that runs our guest book, and it's also our phone for the place. And I see we have one message waiting. Uh, panning around some more. Uh, this is the front of the uh, classroom space. We have a projector system that's high def as well, a couple of whiteboards. And I'm going to go into our, this will be a little bit quicker, but here's some more parts that we recently received. There's just basically the place is brimming with parts. Wow. What was this space um, before you uh, turned it into this cool hacker space? What was it? Uh, this was an optician's place where they ground uh, lenses for glasses, and this was the main area where you would come in and shop for your glasses. Huh. This is one of our work tables that's now just chock full of all kinds of Amazing parts, and here's some die holders for wow. chips that almost were, and we've got all kinds of stuff. We haven't even, we're just starting to get through it. Um, we're now going into our lounge area, which is another workspace and another training area. You all still there? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're just looking at this. I, I, can't, I can't look at you and do this, so I just assume <laughs> you're all there. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, we have an actual working Amiga 500. That's cool. uh, it gets a little bit of use. This is a gaming area for when people bring in uh, young people and they want to play a game. We can do that. We have another member who wants to work on a computer cluster, so another member donated uh, six computers for that effort. We have the required coffee pot, microwave, and full-size refrigerator, which is stocked for anybody to come in. Um, we have a futon, but we also had to place this sign in the space so that uh, it's a violation to sleep here overnight because we're zoned for light industrial. Yeah, a lot of hacker spaces go through that because, uh, you know, people are like, oh, I'll just crash here, and you really right. can't. Well, you can crash if there's someone else here. It's because it's light industrial, they assume it's empty at night. Oh, yeah. They won't come looking for you if there's a problem. Yeah. We're now going into our shop area. This is where we have uh, uh, a mill. You'll start to hear our server cluster in the background, so it might it might um, be louder than I am. Here's our 40 watt laser. We do have a laser available here, and let me just show you quickly. It does get used. Yeah, <laughs> quite a bit. I'll close that later. Uh, we have a chemical storage cabinet. Here's our tool tool um, 
tool rack and workbench. Yeah, it's a nice workbench with all the screwdrivers. We have a cluster in the corner here with a, a server. Everybody's allowed to have a virtual machine. We have it backed up with a couple of UPSs. Uh, one of the most important places in the space is our restroom. Drill press, sander, grinder, a lathe, a bandsaw, uh, slop sink. We have uh, supplies for screen printing here is another one of the things we do. Back That's to our fun. mill again. Hopefully I'm not going too fast, but uh, wanted to show you the whole place. Like we said, we are basically a, um, it's going to back, back to me in the picture again. That was the whole place. Um, we're in the industrial part of Highland Park, which is right next to uh, New Brunswick, New Jersey, which is the home of Rutgers University. And uh, some other members were going to be here, but they have Hack RU this evening. So, uh, and how many how many members do you have? Uh, we're approaching thirty members that we can count on, but we still are always looking for donations. Uh, I'm currently this year's treasurer, so it's basically a month to month. I can't believe how much we get charged for electricity kind of thing, so I get yeah. a lot of sticker shock from the bills, but we keep trying to pull it together. We have a fundraiser going on to purchase a Lulzbot 3D printer because we want to have something that uh, is basically print and go. We have uh, one of our members works for Shapeways over in your direction and another member works um, is um, works at Rutgers University and he is the, the Center for Virtual Worlds and he does a lot of the university inspired 3D printing. He's also one of the creators of um, this board. This yeah. is the Fubarino that's available on Seed Studios. This isn't going to be a big commercial. I just want an awareness of what it is. That's yeah. all. It's really cool. Use it as a fundraiser. And uh, that's its URL, fubarino.org slash SD. We have the, a couple of versions of it coming out. And we've been picked up by Mer Microchip to actually sell it for awesome. us. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, two of our members actually developed uh, something we call MPIDE, which is a is basically a branch of the Arduino IDE uh, for uh, diligent digilent. I always say that one digilent uh, microchips that are pick based. So we have that uh, going on as well here. And uh, any anybody in the area who would like to you know find out anything about us again, it's fubarlabs.org. Awesome. Thank you so Great. much. Thank you so much, Brian. And, you know, um, you uh, can email support at adafruit.com and we can send you a sticker. It's, this, it's just this big, so it won't cover the entire hacker space. I'm not real worried about it. I'm more excited about the fact that we have the hacker space relationship with you guys. When we're ready to buy stuff, we get uh, yeah. Yeah. that. So that, that kind of outweighs the sticker, so I'm not really... You can still have a sticker. Yeah, one, one uh, of the reasons yeah. we did that program was we were hoping, because we knew that a lot of hacker spaces had a lot of financial crunches, we were hoping that what hackerspaces could do is that you know, they could have workshops and use our kits, which they were doing already, and get the like a 40% discount, but then they could charge for the kits at full price yeah, and get a little bit a more A lot money. of hackerspaces are um, self-sustaining because they get the kits at a great discount, and then they hold workshops, and yeah, that's how they... we put together some kits in the past, but I like that idea too, and I will, uh, as an officer, I can bring that to the board for... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because that's like an easy thing. You don't have to worry about, like, a lot of people who are whole workshops are like, well, we don't have time to make the kits and assemble the kits, so they would buy them from us. And they were like, hey, well, just, like, if you're buying 20 kits, we'll give you a discount. Yeah, so we treat all hackerspaces as uh, distributors, uh, same discount, yeah. same everything. Yeah, we, we actually had, a, had our own little uh, picking line with the, the little individual tubs and all that, and it was driving us crazy. So yeah. Yeah, we totally. understand that part about kitting and are happy when somebody else does it. So mm -hmm. I, I agree with you on that. All right, cool. Thank you very much for the opportunity and great show, guys. Yeah, thank thanks you so for much, coming Brian. by. See you All right, and we're going to wrap up the show with, uh, I'm going to wait for this right. Jianan. Uh, Jian Lee. Hello. Un unmute your mic and show us yeah. your project. Oh, my God. My, my heart is beating so fast right now. Uh, it's uh, I, So I just got this Arduino two weeks ago. It's my first time working with a, a microcontroller. Oh, wow. So um, the project is... Ah, uh, let me just unplug it. Uh, so it's a um, keyboard. 
Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's so cool. cute. So with uh, 12 keys and um, uh, actually it, it has uh, four octaves. Okay. So, and just to let you, just so you know, here is a uh, potentiometer uh -huh. that uh, controls which octave it's on. And then it's indicated by these three LEDs. Okay. So um, I'm just plug it in. Uh, it's a pretty good wiring job for your first uh, electronics project. <laughs> <laughs> I, I spent a lot of time on it. <laughs> yeah. So um, so the thing is, it can so it can work as a um, like a standalone uh, uh, like a system. So the sound can come out of this piezo. Hmm. So. I don't know whether you guys can hear it, yeah, but... Yeah, play a song. Like, <laughs> can you guys hear it? <laughs> yeah. Yay! yeah. So, How often do you have to practice to get good at that? That's <laughs> the octaves and everything? Wow. Uh, 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 and besides, um, if I connect this uh, pin from uh, switch it from three to four, uh, it can work with um, the um, uh, serial MIDI converter that from uh, Spikinzi Lab. So I just figured out this today, and uh, let me just open it up and uh, connect it to GarageBand. So. Can you guys hear it? Oh, yeah. yeah. So it just hooked up the. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna just play a little more. Yeah, play it again. Oh. That's yeah, cool. Oops. You guys can see it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Excellent. You can be Yoshi and I'll Excellent. be Mario. Excellent work. This yeah. is really we're gonna, cool. We're going to go a great, on an adventure now. What a great start. So um, do you normally uh, play music and you want to decide to do electronics or, or what uh, was the reason? Yeah, I've been playing piano. So. Okay, great. Yeah. That's cool. It's a really tough piano to play. Yeah, one of the things that we're starting to see, people who are talented um, musicians get into electronics and then they start making their own instruments out of all sorts of different things because an Arduino can, you know, be the bridge between a musical instrument and changing a lot of stuff. So conductive things and um, using sensors um, as the input, all sorts of different stuff. Very awesome. cool. Thank okay, you well, so much. Um, that definitely deserves a sticker. So yeah, make sure yeah, you yeah, email sticker. support at adafruit.com and you'll get an as seen on show and tell sticker that you can put on your Arduino piano. <laughs> piano Arduino. Yes. And with that, um, we're going to wrap up all the right. show and tell. What a great show and tell this week. Yay. Thank you, Brian, the tour. Thank you, Jay. Your Pi computer, and thank you, Dion, um, on your uh, MIDI Mario Mario Arduino music keyboard. Um, <laughs> show and tell is every single week, 9:30 on Google Plus. Um, we do this uh, every time, right before Ask an Engineer. Yes, I'll and uh, make sure you post up any links to your projects in the um, show notes or in the um, uh, Google Plus page, so folks can check it out. Yes, and I like the piano project. It's a good idea. Yeah, so we'll do a little tutorial on how to do something like that. And we'll see everybody on Ask an Engineer in five minutes, and we'll see everybody soon. Bye-bye.